Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So we're going to start off with the C4 Create in the, our LifeWire Craft series. Now we're going to create in this episode, we're going to create a new LifeWire component called Store inside a Tags folder. And we're going to do some real-time validation. Now everything that I'm going to do in the store right here, you can do in the Tag component that we created a couple of episodes back so you don't have to create the live wire component store but i'm doing this out of personal preference because i like to kind of keep my things separate right totally up to you now the next thing that i want to show you under resources views components i've got two components that i created the alert component and a button component the button is to actually submit the form and the message one is to Kind of when the session has a message of success we display the message right here now these two components right here are easily downloadable i will leave a link in the description and i'll show you all right so this is the components you will see it's a components.zip and you have the lids and the buttons right there just make sure you copy them and paste them inside your components folder and you paste them in here right here it's under components alerts and buttons right so let's quickly create our life wire component so you don't have to uh, we'll quickly create this one and then we can get started so open up terminal so php artisan make life wire i'm going to call this one in a tags folder and i'm just going to call it store Right, so as you can see, it created the class and the view for us. Okay, all good stuff. So on the app, HTTP, LifeWire, we'll see we got a new tags folder and I've got the store right there. All right, so let's start off with the first one. We're going to create a public property. And this one is going to be for the name. And obviously, I'm not going to create an email inside that, but I just want to do this for the real-time validation for anybody that might want to learn that. Right, so when I do save the form, I'm not going to make use of it. I'm just going to basically just use that for real-time validation. Right, so that's the two public properties. The next thing we need to do is we need to add some rules. Right, so this is what we're going to use for the validation. So let's start off. We're just going to create an array. And inside that, we're just going to have the name. Okay, the name field. We're going to make that required. And we want to make that name unique. It must be unique inside the tags table and the name type, like this name column. Right, and we want to do is we want to set a minimum amount of characters. Let's make it easy, make it two. And you can set it to whatever you want. And we want to do a max of, let's say, 10. All right, let's go uh, to the email. I'm just going to use the email. I'm just repeating myself again. Just going to use the email just for validation because someone else might want to use this somewhere else and I can just learn it right here. And we just want to check the email right here. Okay, so just like that. Now the next thing, all right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tap into LifeWire's class hook called Updated. Okay, so let's just quickly create that method. All right, so this one is called updated. Now, the thing is, whenever we type something in an input field, so in this case, let's say the name right there, this method, this hook basically fires off. Now, we're going to use this hook to do the real-time validation on the rules that we just created right there. Okay, so let's do that. So in order to do real-time validation, you can do validate only. All right, so this is for the real-time validation. If you don't want to do that, you can just do validate. Okay, so that happens So when we submit the form, then it's going to check the rules only then. Okay, so what we want to do, we do want some real-time validation. Now, the thing is, it's requiring an argument, as you can see right there, zero arguments. Now, the thing is, you can add anything in you want. I can even call this one Joe Soap and put it in here, Joseph. That's not gonna have any effect on my validation rules, all right? So you can just call this one like it is in the documentation, property, no, like this, okay? So you can do it just like that. 
no problemo. Let's move on to the next thing. This will be responsible. So whenever this is basically the class hook right here, updated, like I explained before. So whenever anything fire happens in here, this hook fires off. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to validate that. But the next thing is this is going to be responsible for actually creating the tag. So public function and this one is the store right here. And we're just going to bring in the tag. Just make sure we bring in the tag model. And what we want to do is we want to run the create method on it. Right? The static method. Right. So what we want to do is we want to set the name to this name. The property that we created. And the next thing is for the slug, we want to set that to a string. Just make sure we bring in it as well to this name. Right, so I'm just going to make sure I bring this in. So eliminate support string and the tag. Otherwise, we're going to get an error that those classes are not found. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to flash the session. Uh, with the success message. And we're going to just say tag. You can be fancy or it's be more creative for this. I'm just going to say tag created. And then we're just going to reset this input fields for the name and the email. Okay, so that you can just say this reset. Okay, so what that does is basically the input fields it just sets them to nothing. Okay. Right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to obviously go to our view and we have to do some work in here. So let's start off with the first one. Delete that and make this a section. I'm just a section and I'm just going to give it a class. Right, so just give it a class of half, padding for MX Auto space Y4 and a shadow. And inside that, I'm just going to create an H2 with a tag small. And it tags indigo or 500. Just like this. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to say create tags. All right. So under this, we're just going to create a form. All right. So we're not going to have any action methods like that. So we're just going to move that. So any action attributes are removed. The next thing we're going to do is we need to add a wire submit right here. So we're going to use live wire to do the submit the form, but we just want to prevent the default behavior of the form. So prevent, and we're going to set this to our store method right here. So let's just add the store. Okay. So when we submit the form, it's going to call on the store method and the store is this method to be created right there. Okay, and I just want to give this a class of space Y. Okay, let's start off. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a div with the same thing, space Y. And inside this, I just want to make it easy for us. Okay, so if you're using a Jetstream installation, you go to resources, views. You're going to the vendor folder, actually on the auth. You will see the login right there. You can copy basically the Jetstream label for the email and the input fields right there. So just copy them and paste them inside your store. All right. And then we just change them to the name. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to bind our Y model. So Y model. And we want to bind that basically to the name property right here. So let me just actually give us a name like that. But before I do that, I just want to add a debounce. Otherwise, we're going to do a lot of requests to the server. And I just want to keep that to a minimum. So I just want to add a debounce of 500 milliseconds. Okay, so the next thing, just copy this one down. And we're going to do the same thing for the email. All right, so we got our Y model dot debounce for the email as well. So just make sure you have that in. Now, the next thing I just wanted to show you, if you just put the XJet input error, this is just part of the Jetstream installation. Okay, so if there's any errors right there, it will display it right this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add our submit button. Okay, so if you downloaded the link, you can obviously use it. So we can do like 
buttons just like this and then we're just going to add the dot primary like this okay so that's the button that we just downloaded now there's a couple of attributes i want to add in here so i'm just going to do a wire target and i'm going to set that to the store method Right, so if the wire, if it's loading, right, so what I want to do is I want to disable the button as well. So attribute, and we just want to say disabled. All right, the next thing is we want to say the button is type or submit. And there's another important property right here, and this is called disabled. Right. And we're going to set it to a method that we're going to create in a second a variable called disabled. Now the thing is, if we go to that button right now, what I'm have, having in here is we're going to have an if. If the disabled is basically true, disable this button right there. The reason for that is if the person has any errors, all right, so let's say, if we type in here and the real-time validation is letting us know, listen, there's an error, then we want to disable the button, or if the fields are empty, we want to disable the button as well. So I need to create a method for that. So let's quickly, at the top right here, we're going to add PHP tags, and I'm just going to create that disabled variable, and I'm going to set that to if there's any errors. So errors, we want, just want to do a ternary operator, so we're going to do any. So if there's any errors, Okay, we're going to question, and then we're going to set it to true, else we set it to false. Okay, so this is the button that we're going to disable if there's any errors. Or, we want to check if it's empty, uh, basically this name, and, or, if it's empty, this email, just like that. Okay, so basically we're going to disable the button if there's any errors or if the input field of this name is empty and if the email is empty. Okay, awesome stuff. Okay, so the next thing we need to do in here is we need to add the create right here. Okay, so now we can work with this form. Now the thing is we need to link this component all right, this one right we have created right here to our main component that we created. This one right here. So if I go in here, what I'm going to do, I'm just, as you can see, the tags right there. So I'm just going to reference that create right there as livewire tags dot stop. Right. So now our livewire is all hooked up to our main component. All right. So I'm just going to close this off. So as you can see, we got create tags and we got the name right there and we got the email address. And as you can see, the button is disabled. We cannot do anything. The next thing I want to add in here is the alerts. So just above the title, I just want to do X alerts message. Just like that. Okay, so now we got our alert in here as well. Right, so let's quickly see if our validation work. So as we can see already, the button works quite well. So we disabled the button, but now we just want to check if the real-time validation work as well. Right, let's start off with the first one, PHP. As you can see, the name has already been taken. So if I just add one more, you can see the name must at least be five characters. So let's add one more again. You can see it disappears, but the button is still disabled. All good. So if I do email, as you can see, the email must be a valid email address. And if we add email.com, as you can see, the button is displayed right there. So if we create this, you can see we get a message tag created and it disappears right there. All right, so that's an end of this episode. If you guys have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, please ask them for me in the comment section. I'll gladly respond to them. And please give this video a like. It helps out the algorithm for YouTube, and I kind of want to get the videos out there. So thank you guys. See you in the next one. Adios.